All right, let's give this a shot. Welcome to the weekly updates for TradeLab.ai. Uh, my name is Jake, and today is the 15th of January, 2023. We're going to go over uh, a bunch of the stuff that has changed over in the past week or so, uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the upcoming features and then answer any of your questions um, that you guys have. So. First thing we'll talk about is several um, additions to the builder and trade settings. Um, so if we go into my strategies uh, and I take a look at one of my test strategies, we'll be able to find a couple new options here. Um, so don't know if it built yet it hasn't built or wait has it built do, do, do. yeah we'll wait for that to build see if it builds here in a second um all right so we're going to be checking out the trade settings here and over in the trade settings um, there's a couple extra options here first in the limit offset type we now have pip tick so if you guys wanted to offset your uh, limit uh, entry uh, prices by a pip or a tick, you can do that. Um, so once again, this is just like the minimum uh, movement of that symbol. And you could have done this with USD relative if you knew the minimum movement of the symbol. But this is going to let you do it in whole numbers and I'll take care of it for you. Um, so you can select that, do like 50 pips, and you got that going for you there. So that would create a limit order instead of a market order, right? If you had it off just by one pip or one tick, in most cases? Yeah, well, as long as you have a, a limit uh, order type selected here. If you had market order, this will be ignored, right? And right. this has been around for a while. I just added this extra uh, option, this filter here. Um, right. This is how you offset. Cool. Yeah. So we got that uh, last week. I think I mentioned this, but we do have margin auto borrow. Uh, I did this for Binance. Um, specifically, works for Binance uh, spot margin. If there's another exchange that somebody's interested in using for this, let me know. Um, but I have that in there as well. Uh, we do have the heartbeat speed, been working on this, I um, think it's where it needs to be now, um, but we're still just uh, messing with it, a couple people are testing it. Um, so the heartbeat speed allows you to turn heartbeats off, go fast or slow, uh, and also set a custom heartbeat. Um, and then we can also um, uh, set an offset to that. So this is new from last week, um, we can say 10 seconds. Um, and if it's supposed to start at the beginning of the minute, uh, we can say 10 seconds. Actually, this is 10 minutes. I'm sorry. 10 seconds here. We can say 10 seconds, and that would actually move it um, 10 seconds from the beginning of the minute. right? So instead of firing your heartbeat at the beginning of the minute, we would um, fire it 10 seconds into the minute. So that's how you do that. You can set this up to slow one minute, 10 seconds, and that's a, a way to set that up. All right. So in addition to that, we had a couple other, I actually need to look at my list uh, to make sure I cover everything here. Um, I know one of the other things that we worked on was, uh, let's see, what did I work on? Uh, it was the pip tick and then also the, well, uh, so those pip ticks are in, sorry, those pip ticks are also in the line system. So if you come into here um, and do quick edit, uh, we have the pip tick in there as well, so I just want to mention that. Um, and then the other thing that we've been going back and forth on uh, with a couple uh, users is uh, the amount types. So we wanted to do percent of balance, and percent of balance was in last week, but now we've changed it to 
percent of quote balance and percent of coin balance when trading um, when trading a contract this doesn't really matter both of these are going to be the same no matter what you select it'll be okay uh, if you're trading spot it can matter right because you have two different balances um, quote is the um, the end of so if I'm doing BTC USDT quote would be the end and coin would be the beginning in fact it should be base I went back and forth on whether I would call it coin or base I thought coin was more understanding to most people but then when you put it up against quote it was just like why not just call it base because that's the standard lingo um, so I think I'm going to call it quote and base. The, the issue with quote and base is that there's even some exchanges out there who get these confused and in their own documentation will tell you that it's the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Um, so I will tell you what we use and what CCXT and many other exchanges with the standard is supposed to be is uh, the base is the, be the former of the pair and the quote is the ending of the pair, the, the latter of the pair. Okay, so uh, quote would be USDT, uh, base or coin would be um, BTC. Okay, so most people, when you're trading uh, like linear perpetuals, you would select quote balance and that would be USDT. Remember when I said if you're trading perpetual swaps or, or futures, even if you select coin, it'll be okay. Right, because it's you. There's only one balance when you're doing futures, right? It's just USDT um, or linear. It could be the coin, right? Uh, it depends on if you're using like USDT uh, uh, futures or coin futures, right? Um, and they call them inverse. Um, so anyway, I'll quit Babylon, but that's what that is. It's a way for you to set your balance, uh, set your your line amount off of your balance and because there's two different balances with spot we allow you to pick the different balance okay um i do i, I did expand this it's now very long <laughs> i did expand this help text uh so if you ever want to you know see what any of these do if you didn't know this you can hover over the eye icons and it'll show you um what's going on there okay Right, and I do hear some. I do hear some uh, pings. If anybody's got any questions, you can leave a message. Uh, two trades. Okay, I'll take a look at that. All right, so uh, let's take a look at my list. Make sure I don't forget anything. So we wanted to go through the balance. We did that. Uh, we also went through the ticks. Uh, let's take a look at the P&L generator. Um, so we'll go over to trades. And uh, I gotta back up on this account. Okay. So if we take a look at trades, let's select one that I haven't done, hopefully, and we'll scroll down here. If we click on uh, generate uh, test p &L, it'll now ask you, this is still in test, but I'm, I'm working my way towards it, right? So uh, I was like, big, how does this make you, uh, how did this trade make you feel? Like a big balloon city. Right, like just something random, um, whatever you want to say, nice and fuzzy. Um, but if you if you uh, put that in, that's going to turn it into a prompt for um, the AI, and now we get some uh, balloons up in the sky. So this one was pretty pretty tame here. Um, I actually haven't tried. And like I said, this is still in test here. I haven't tried regenerating an image, but let's try it. So. Let's say a uh, big fuzzy bear in the woods with ice cream. All right, and let's see if it actually regenerates or if it gets, oh, there it goes, yeah, awesome. 
So there's our big fu fuzzy bear with ice cream. And he's in the woods in the background. All right, so uh, this is something that we can play around with. Um, I do have more plans to generate more frames and more themes for this, uh, giving you the ability to put this instead of a background, maybe in a small frame, so that it's not, a, you know, cluttering things up, but you still have a, a cool little AI generated image, that sort of stuff, right? So this is like a extra project. Uh, I'm sure everybody has issues and things and and uh, and new wishes for the program. Um, I don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this, right? But um, as we go forward, we'll, uh, we'll get more and more options in this little package there, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the API connector and spot uh, settings for exchanges. So when we set up an exchange now, there's a lot more options uh, for certain exchanges. For Binance and for Bybit, there's uh, additional options on how you want to connect. And we used to have a bunch of checkboxes here. I've now replaced this with a drop-down box, and we have contract, spot, or spot margin. You can only select one. It'll take care of everything for you. If you want to have, uh, if you want to trade on all three for Bybit, that's totally okay. You would just create three different exchanges uh, within uh, trade lab you can even use the same api key right so you, don't, you only need to make one api key uh, check all the permissions um, but then once you set that up uh, you would need to use that api key three times to select the three different types of trading then you would name this like buy bit uh, contract right or maybe buy bit uh, spot right and and select spot over here so ha whatever you want to do there Okay, I do want to show you guys, I'm going to pull up um, one of my test, probably going to have to get rid of this IP. It is a testnet IP, so, or uh, API key, but I want to show you guys what this looks like now. So this is testnet, we're going to connect the contract, we got this set up for Bybit contract. Okay, and I hit next. We now have a uh, test system uh, that is testing the connection uh, with your API. And if we can get all of the information uh, that we need to from it, it should uh, pass and say you're good to go. Let's see if it's. That's pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. Connecting yeah. APIs has been a bear in the past. Here we go. Yes, so this is this is one way to smooth that over and make sure that you're connected. There can be, um, w when I was testing this earlier, it was actually a lot faster than that, but there can be a delay uh, in getting the wallet itself set up in the queue, and once that's all set up and we finally do get a balance, it comes back. So it might, might take a few seconds, but just wait, and it should go. If it doesn't go... This is a test net. It's not going to work if I don't give it test net. So if it doesn't go, it should give me a failure. Um, and I, I need to reset those actually. Um, what I should do is I should just back out and start a new one real quick. Okay, so. If I do this, and I have garbly gook in here, and I try to connect. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Ugh, um, why is that happening? Gotta look at this again and see. That's editing. Symbols of the 
and see what's going on. But the what what I wanted to show was that when it does fail, it's supposed to fail. Um, it pops up a bunch of uh, troubleshooting steps, right? So it has a bunch of information that helps you troubleshoot um, and make sure that you have the right permissions. You have like read and write checked. You have the uh, IPs entered in correctly. Um, all of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, so we are working on that, um, trying to make that more streamlined, uh, and I just got to make sure that it's testing properly. Um, Thanks, so. Jake. I just ran my on uh, Bybit, and it was ready to go. It went green just instantly. Yeah, yeah, so. So, that's we'll, good. Thank you. Awesome, yeah. So, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we get good testing on that, and, uh, and yeah, so we'll, uh, We'll have one vote, one vote for me. It works fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it. I think it works fine all the time. <laughs> which, which when it's supposed to fail, it should fail. But we'll we'll look into that um, and get that going. No, no big deal. I literally just put that in what like last night or two nights ago. So it's one of those things. Um, all right. So we got that API. We got that spot account uh, checker. I do have some other things that I am going to be working on um, real quick. Coming up, one thing that I want to work on is event-based rules. I've already put things in place for this uh, as far as the fast rules and the heartbeat rules that we've been talking about the last couple weeks. Um, event-based rules are going to be like your purple utility rules, except running uh, instead of running just on a rule timer, it'll run whenever a trade opens, whenever a trade closes, whenever a stop line places, whenever a stop line cancels. There'll be a whole bunch of different uh, baked in events that you can select. Uh, and then you can also uh, use any events that you're uh, logging as well. So whenever, if you've ever uh, looked into this before, take a look at, uh, Take a look at the builder, and if you ever looked at the log action, uh, you can actually uh, create your own logs. So down here, this is logs, and if you didn't know, you can create your own logs by going to log event and typing in some event name, um, selecting if it's going to be like red or blue or green or yellow, right, and then uh, typing in some sort of message right here, right. Um, I also do have some uh, support for baking in information like this. Um, it's, I, I think most of it works, but uh, there's probably a few things. I don't think a whole lot of people have used this, so I'm expecting that as more people use it, we'll have some more uh, tweaks to this. But uh, this is how you uh, set up an event and how you set up a log. Uh, based off of a rule passing, right? So here's the rule. It's it's going to pass when we have all this We're going to decrease our position and then I'm going to run my own event Right, so uh, we might already have a built-in event that fires every time I decrease my position or something right and then you could create uh, This isn't ready yet, but I'm just explaining a new concept and uh, always open to feedback from anybody but you could create a new utility rule and you could select what event you want to run off of. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to run this rule anytime you ran a decrease position, then you could select decrease position and have it run. Okay? But if you wanted to, if you had two of these, two decrease positions, you could have one of them with a special log event here with your own special event and then you could come down here and say run this rule on the sum special event that I made right and then it won't run on you know just everyone it'll just run on this rule and now I can control things a whole lot better right so this is sort of like a rule timer in a sense um, doing it that way um, but there's also different ways that you can combine these things and, and make it act differently um, so uh, so yeah I'm also looking at uh, cross like global rules uh, sorry global events so that you could set an event and uh, all of your strategies could hear it at the same time sort of like global variables but just a sort a slightly different way to approach it um, has a couple benefits uh, logically, but 
We'll talk about that more as it comes up. All right. Um, the cool thing about an event-based system like that is the other thing I want to do is create a calendar system. So I want to have just a calendar page, uh, and then you can set up your own days, uh, you know, either a one-time event, the FTC is going to announce something, or, you know, I want to block out all weekends, you know, and not trade on the weekends. Um, and then it'll send an event to say, hey, this is a date event, um, and my event is, you know, turn off on the weekend. And then you'll have a rule that says, hey, turn off on the weekend and put it to sleep. Right, and that's that's how you can set that up. So totally customizable there as usual. Um, I also have a couple different things that I'm going to do on the back end uh, as it relates to Timmy, so that we can make things more streamlined um, and uh, make rules run a little bit faster as well. Okay. Uh, speaking of Timmy, we've had quite a few upgrades to Timmy. Um, just, I mean, there's been a good amount of work done to Timmy. He's not uh, ready to help your strategies or rules yet. He's still in preview mode, but uh, we've got him writing PineScript, writing Python, um, that sort of stuff. In fact, I had a conversation with Timmy earlier that I can try to replay for you guys. Um, so I could say, please output me pine script, uh, for an EMA crossing 20, should have put 200, but either way it should give me an output. Are we running slow right now? So far? Um, Is Timmy running on uh, Chat GPT? It's running on GPT three. Chat GPT is not actually publicly available. Um, okay. They're supposed to make it available soon, but it's not available yet. Yeah, because your Did voice I... command is kind of similar to the examples. So that's why I asked. Okay, thanks. I wonder if I. I was just messing with it. Did I mess something up? Oh, because I changed the format to uh, HTML, didn't I? And I, I didn't actually test that, did I? Dang it. Okay. Uh, reverse. Reverse. Okay. Um, open AI reverse. Push this for a second. Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Okay, so we got that, and we'll just look at it locally while we wait for that to build. Um, so you'll first notice that I did move Timmy uh, over off to the side here, and he does have a one-time little pop-out that comes up to get to grab your attention to let you know that he's there. Uh, once you click on that pop-up, it goes away forever, so, you know, I'm not trying to full-on Clippy you, if anybody remembers Clippy. From Microsoft Word. I'm not trying to full on Clippy here, but it is. It, this is actually literally the the concept and the vision that I've had from for a long time is sort of like a little Clippy, you know, that <laughs> that is gonna help you trade and stuff. And so we'll uh, take a look at that here. Rule block. Uh, this is what you get for changing a bunch of stuff right before the call. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. 
So we got that, and this is generating. Uh, well, I can experiment with Pine script by using Timmy. Yes. So uh, I I'll do it live here in a second. But while I'm stalling here, why don't we just take a look at what I did yesterday? So this is what came out of Timmy yesterday. Um, I said, uh, please output me PineScript for EMA Crossing 20. It says, sure, I can help you with that. Here's the PineScript code. And it outputted this uh, PineScript code in version 4. And I said, uh, can you write PineScript uh, for RSI Crossing 70? So it did that too, separately, uh, using alert condition here. And then I said, uh, can you show me this with RSI Crossing 30, RSI Crossing 70, and then uh, Price Crossing EMA? And can you use if statements where applicable? Um, it didn't actually use any if statements. It just used alert condition. Um, but it went ahead and created the three different uh, setups there and then created an alert condition where here it actually is creating one condition where all three are crossing. And you can see how I kind of told it to do that with what I, I said, you know, make it crossing this, this, and this. If I would have told it to create three different alerts, and maybe we'll try that here in a second, um, hopefully it would create three different alert conditions. Right? Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, but it is, you have to be specific with what you ask it. This is AI. This isn't just, you know, Timmy or Trade Lab. Uh, you, you, you guys will learn once you, you know, when you start messing with GPT and everything else that these AIs, you got to be specific with them, right? And you got to uh, tell them exactly what you want. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Um, I just screwed up. Hold on a second. Um, node. Oh, what am I doing? Uh oh. Let that go, and we should be back in session here. All right, so yeah, so we've been messing with Timmy. Uh, that is coming along. Uh, I'll show more of Timmy here in a second. And then I've also was just working on uh, some interesting things right before the call. So we'll talk about that real quick. So there is a new setting that I have made, and I believe it should be pushed, perhaps not, no, so it's still building, um, but we'll take a look at it locally here, once this is done, and uh, I have added a new option, there's been concern about stop lines, and um, making sure that we always have a stop line, that we don't lose stop lines or anything like that. And uh, what happens normally is when we go to move a stop line, we would end up canceling the current stop line and then place the new stop line. However, if the new stop line had an issue, we would be left with no stop line. So what I've done is I've created a new option in risk management called cancel stop line before new order. This, if you check it, does what we've done in the past. So I'm changing the default here, okay? This is off by default for everybody going forward, so I'm changing the behavior, okay? The behavior now is we try to place your stop order, and if, and uh, in, in some cases, we try to re replace it using a modify uh, call. In cases where we can't do that, we, uh, we place a new order on top of the order that we already have. Uh, and in most cases, for futures and everything, this is totally allowed, it's totally fine. Um, and then we, it, once we know that that is complete and it's good to go and we now have two stop uh, lines, we go ahead and delete the old stop line. Okay, and so that should, 
prevent us from ending up in no man's land with no stop lines. Um, I do also always have the suggestion that you should use the liquidation backstop. You can set this in risk management uh, in account settings or you can set it in uh, the settings of the uh, strategy itself in trade settings. There's uh, liquidation uh, settings in here as well. Right. Um, right down here. Okay, so that's the liquidation backstop there. So I, I do recommend that you have a liquidation backstop that's sort of like a backup stop loss. Um, and it's the same thing uh, if you wanted to come in here and create a stop line, you could create two stop lines. One that you move and one that you don't move. That's sort of like a backup, right? Um, but besides that, I do have the new option to uh, cancel it before and after, and by default, we're now canceling it after. So hopefully that should uh, shore up any confusion and issues there. Um, and then I also did just add... Uh, well, it would help if I had a line now, wouldn't it? I'm just going to real quickly add a default line and my take line here I have is placed now so uh, if you want to check if your line is placed uh, you can do that maybe on your heartbeats and if it's not placed you could say replace it right so that might look like this um, so if it's not placed then just touch the active is one way to do it so it's probably already active right but we're just going to touch it we're just going to say true again and that will make it replace because every time you touch it it, it updates uh the last updated time and if the last updated time is recent it will try to replace right and so that's what we're doing here um we just check to see if it's not placed and if it is hey make sure we try to place it right Every time we try to place a TPSL line, we do try to place it at least five times. Sometimes more, uh, you know, in certain circumstances. But if we have a particular issue and it doesn't place the first time, we will try five times uh, to, to make sure that we place that line. And if, if we don't place it, then we tell you that we erred and we had an issue. Um, and as I said, in some cases, we may tell you that we had an issue, an error, and we might still keep trying to place the line. <laughs> and, and, and if we get it in there, then great, you know, and then we stop trying. Um, and so that's how that usually goes. Um, okay, so I think that is all of the changes that have happened recently. Um, thanks, everybody. It, it took a little bit longer than usual. Um, but does anybody have any questions on that? Yes, back at the exchange setup, I went back to the screen, and then I guess when you do the test setup, it says it's okay, and then if you click on the box at the top that set up exchange, you have to go back to essentially your, uh, your exchange, and I guess set it up, is that correct? Uh Sorry, I lost you. So when you when you set this up, okay. Let me, yeah, let me see if I can find the screen again. Um, so when you set this up, you enter your API key, and then you hit next, and then it'll try to connect. Yeah, for the test. Yeah, but then I tried to add a a real additional one just with spot exchange. And do you go all the way through and just hit next only, or do you add touch? Let me get the control now. Okay, I'm on um, the screen, and it's for spot margin. And I created a nickname. I have the API key. And then it, the last uh, window is create exchange account. Is that a box you hit? Uh, if you don't have an exchange account, 
you can. That's just a link to allow you to create an account on that exchange on Bybit. Okay, for that new nickname? Uh, well, no. So, so if you didn't have an account to trade on Bybit, you would need to create an account. And so if you were oh. presented with this screen and I'm asking you for an API key and a client secret, you don't have one. You need a way to create an account. So yeah, I put I a button a, uh, that says create account so you can do that and then eventually oh, okay. you can set that up. That's all that is. Yeah, because I have the Bybit API key right in there. Yeah. Yeah, and, you don't have to okay. you don't have to hit that button every time. Yeah, that's okay. just to help you out there. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, that, um, let's do an undefined oh maybe that's why because it's not getting it's like sorry guys I'm interested real quick um, I just want to see if I go through here this up and it runs okay so it's gonna go spot next let's do that before and then it's doing uh-huh okay does it even get the, so it does, it eventually does get it. So if it does get it, then is it not using it here? It is. But when it calls, get symbols. That's undefined. 